that day, that Derby day, we became him. We all won the Kentucky Derby that day. The Little Dancer is over a winner. The first Canadian bred horse to ever win the Kentucky Derby. That put Canadian breeding on the map, so to speak. You know, we had arrived. We'd won the Derby. Here's a horse that has never been out of the money. A tremendous record. 11 victories and 14 starts. Coming into today's race had won over $280,000. There is Mr. E.P. Taylor of Canada. Mr. Taylor is uh, quite an interesting man. He's a 63-year-old tycoon, most influential businessman without a doubt in Canada. For him and his life, which has been a big one. He's always dreamt of this. He didn't believe he could do it, but he dreamt of it, and, and he did it. Leading northern dancer who is really lathered up, perspired after that trek record time of two minutes for the mile and a quarter on a lightning fast track. The, of the seventh race, the Kentucky Derby, now official. The horse is a particularly good horse, and I'm proud to have bred him. He was admirably trained by the great trainer, Horatio Laura, and ridden superbly by Bill Hartack. It's naturally probably my most proud day in, in racing to be here today. Well, I had great faith in this horse. He has been very consistent. He has run always very well, and he's honest, and he has a big heart. I think this is a case where a good little horse won, and I think he deserved it very much. I really do. He's all blood and he's all gut. Canadians went horse crazy. Northern Dancer won. And he broke the 89-year-old track record in just two minutes flat. Oh, crime! We all knew we were just like we knew we were Ken when Kennedy was assassinated or when man landed on the moon. I mean, everybody was walking 10 feet taller. People were out in the street talking about it, and you know, horns were beeping. And eventually, the city put up a, a huge poster, a billboard, uh, honoring Northern Dancer. We're proud of you. And he became a Canadian hero. You know, I guess he was the Wayne Gretzky of horse racing. Every Everybody was talking Northern Dancer. Little girls were drawing pictures of Northern Dancer. Little girls and boys were writing notes to Northern Dancer. I mean, he was a hero. And now it's Baltimore for still another $100,000 added stakes, the Preakness at Pimlico, where the horses are saddled in the infield. The Preakness is the second jewel in the Triple Crown. Once again, Hill Rise was the favorite. Northern Dancer still had to prove himself. He wins by two and a quarter lengths over the scoundrel with Hill Rise third. Mr. Taylor is the owner of the first Canadian bred colt ever to win the Preakness Stakes. Northern Dancer spending more time in front of the cameras these days than Ed Sullivan even gets a garland of black-eyed Susan. In the Preakness, of course, Northern Dancer was, was even more impressive than he was in, uh, in winning the Derby. This was a cakewalk for him. And then that's when everybody started jumping on the bandwagon that perhaps uh, Northern Dancer was going to be a Triple Crown champion. The third jewel in the Triple Crown of racing, the Belmont Stakes, has 60,000 fans jamming New York's aqueduct track. They have made a heavy favorite out of Northern Dancer, Kentucky Derby, and Preakness winner, but this... E.P. was confident that greatness was minutes away. Winnie tucked a four-leaf clover in her shoe. Northern Dancer was number two in Winfield's turquoise and gold. When they get away, it's a 40 to one shot. Orientalist who takes the lead with Hill Rise second and Northern Dancer back in the pack. The Belmont is a mile and a half race and anything can happen at that distance. He was running third on the outside in the final stretch. And he pulls away from the favored Northern Dancer and the highly touted Hill Rise. Quadrangle has a tendency to slow down when running in front. Eddie Kozak gives him a touch of the whip to keep him flying for the wire and fly he does. Despite a sight well, he just didn't make it. He was third. And uh, we were, of course, extremely disappointed. I guess I felt very sad for my parents. The uh, Belmont Stakes, of course, was a disappointment. The jockey who had ridden them so splendidly in the other two races uh, did take the horse right off the pace. He was running sixth or seventh and many lengths behind the leader and his mouth was wide open and uh, pulling on the... So we always felt that, that uh, if he'd been allowed to run freely, he would have won the race. This horse was definitely compromised in the Belmont, I think. Hartack was, was taking the horse back, and Northern Dancer was fighting him and fighting him to have his head, 
And of course, when a horse does that, he's fighting against the rider, he's expending energy. To this day, Bill Hartick refuses to discuss what happened. I think Bill Hartick followed orders into Belmont. When I spoke to him at a dinner at Saratoga on the 40th anniversary of the Hall of Fame, he told me that didn't cost him the race. He says he was sore. The horse was hurting and he just couldn't perform. And he ran on guts alone and he still finished third. The post-mortem was heated. Fingers pointed in every direction. There was no clear explanation for what happened. And there was still another race to run. Now it's wonderful Woodbine in Toronto for the Queen's Plate. Going back to 1860, the plate is the oldest uninterrupted race on the continent. A mile and one quarter... This Canadian race was as important to EP as the Kentucky Derby. The dancer has come home, a gallant warrior whose record has struck a warm chord with thousands of Canadians. Trainer Luro is here, of course, and Jockey Hartag and Winfield's race. He came out of the gate and it was a huge roar. The crowd thought, you know, this horse is just going to tow rope the field. Seven other Canadian breds engaged the fabled dancer on this warm and sunny June the 20th before more than 31,000 people. And at least 31,000 of them are dismayed as Hartag takes Northern Dancer back and back. That early part of the Queen's Plate was an abomination. You, you could almost sense it in the grandstand, like, you know, what is he doing? Only the filly later Mel trails the dancer. He was, like, trailing the field. It's our Kentucky Derby winner, and he's trailing the field. So Mr. Hartek certainly rode a different kind of race when he came to Canada than what he did in, in, in the States. Now half a mile has fled by, and Northern Dancer is absolutely last. I know my mother and I were standing there with our binoculars. We didn't say a word to each other, but I knew exactly what she was feeling. After three quarters of a mile, Hartak finally finds the running room he wanted. Now watch that champion charge. Bill Hartak, he knew he was going to win this race. He knew he, he, he could press the, the go button on this horse anytime he wanted to. And um, it was a hand ride for Hartak down the stretch. I mean, there was a little bit of drama in the race instead of being a, a one-sided affair right from the get-go. And then Northern Dancers put on this great run, which was wonderful to see. I imagine that he said to himself, hmm, Mrs. Taylor is expecting me to win today. I don't want to disgrace her. And here he comes, bounding in the form and style of the finest thoroughbred in Canadian racing history. And he never raced a game. I think Hartak was grandstanding. He was going to make that one big move and swoop by the field, and 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 uh, it, I think it backfired because he he hurt the horse. Bill Hartak would never do that. Not on a horse. Bill Hartak, if he uh, he held the horse back, is he knew what he had on the rim. He didn't break the horse down. Horses broke down before that. I don't remember being on him one time where he wasn't favoring his left leg. So the horse was never sound, completely sound. Northern Dancer had won an impressive 14 of 18 races in a career that spanned less than a year on a patched hoof. Heroes are like that, divinely driven. Usually a horse that has problems like that eventually say, well, it hurts, you know, I, well, I'm not putting out because that hurts too much. But it wasn't that like that with him. It was, it was go, 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 you know, he just wanted to run. We're talking about royal blood, you know, blue blood. It was, it was all built into him, you know, it was a little horse with a big heart. Northern Dancer was officially retired after the Queen's Plate with an injured tendon. Ron Turcott, his first jockey, rode him for the last time. 
It was a bit of northern magic for Canadians, who thought of themselves more as workhorses than thoroughbreds. He's such a great horse, yeah. I thought it was an honor. And Mr. Taylor would ask me to ride, to parade his horse on his final appearance before the public. An honor that he picked me over so many jockeys. He was game, he was genuine, willing to take on so many challenges. They run their way into your heart. They're, they all have individual personalities. And you love them all. He just gave you more reasons to love him. <laughs>